All right, so today I'm going to review Sister Soldier's long anticipated sequel to Coldest Winter Ever. It is set 15 years after Winter was sentenced to prison. She's just getting out. Disclaimer, this is going to be a spoiler. I think we're gonna we're gonna do a full breakdown. So I think as a reader, if you have never re read the Midnight books or the Poor Santiago book, I think you'll be disappointed with this, this book. A lot of Sister Soldier's common tropes are super prevalent in this book. It's self-righteous, it's long-winded, it's preachy, it's judgmental, and it's a little unrealistic. All of those common tropes that you find in the Midnight books that you found in Poor Santiago's book, you will also find in Life After Death. So if you're somebody who is a fan of the legend that is Winter Santiago and you've only read Coldest Winter Ever, you will probably be disappointed. This book has a lot going on. Again, um, it take the title literally. It is called Life After Death. Winter is dead the whole book. Um, it is something that from literally the first few chapters I started to read and I was like, please wake up from this coma that you're clearly in. Please get up and like give us this unrealistic tale of redemption that we thought we were going to get. Like we thought that Winter was going to get out of jail, was going to, you know, get her enemies, get butter back for it, leaving her to take the rap for his fall, for all the people in the projects who laughed at her family's um, situation and laughed at the things that, that, that happened to them after her father's fall, Simone for slicing her face and just everything. Like we thought Winter was going to be on a war path. Um, so you, you start the book with Winter. She's about to get out of jail. So she's talking to her brother, Elisha, which is Portia's husband. And she's talking to him about her demands. First, unrealistic. Winter is a nobody. Like, I mean, we can pretend like in this book that like her father, Santiago, was like this huge big drug star. And even if you think of like, name the children of the big drug stars, like the big drug dealers. You can't. Um, so Winter went to jail and she's a nobody. Nobody missed her. Nobody remembered her. Butter didn't even come and visit her. So for her to get out of jail and get a $50,000 episode reality show is crazy. Like loving hip hop chicks aren't getting $50,000 an episode. That was BS, um, Sister Soja. It's clear she doesn't watch reality TV. Um, you know, she hasn't appeared to have changed much. And Runt is in her 30s. Like at this point, Jail did not redeem her. She has not become a better person. And she doesn't even appear to be smarter. And I think that's what's unfortunate. The first chapter, the first few chapters, is, you know, is just her trying to tell Elisha that like she's only doing the show if Santiago gets out of jail only if Midnight who hates American black women who despises you know everything about the black neighborhood and about winter she would honestly believe that after 15 years of him not like having anything to do with her in prison anyway that he would want to come and and leave his wives come pick up winter from jail so Elisha agreed to all our Winter's BS demands and Winter's preparing to get out of jail. Then boom, she gets shot dead. Most of the book is in purgatory. It is um, a bunch of demons, a bunch of lost souls, and it's basically the last stop before you get to hell. It is not a place of redemption. You can't redeem yourself in the last stop before the drop because it's there for the lost souls. So Winter gets there and of course in, in full winter fashion, she's dead and she's not like, oh my God, like listen, please God, get me from out of here. Like what do I have to do? So Winter automatically gets there um, and she goes through this like realm of seeing the people that are most important to her. She sees her father in his jail cell and he's notified that his daughter has been killed. Um, he also sees Midnight and at this point Midnight, they, they reference Midnight has four wives. He has like 20 something kids. Um, and then he also has um, Winter's two little sisters, but they only mention one because one of Midnight's sons want to marry their stepsister. And then she also sees her friends. She sees them kind of laughing and talking about Simone killed her. She gets to the last stop before the drop and instantly she meets this guy called Dat Nigga, AKA Lucifer 66. He's wild. He gets with Winter and he's like the, the son of the devil. He has luxury whips, great apartment, this abandoned warehouse. He has great parties. He has drugs. 
and he gives Winter the best sex that she's ever had. At the same time, Winter meets this young girl who resembles her little sister and initially she thinks that the little girl is one of her dead sisters. She finds out that the girl, her name is Bomber Girl and she is one of the twins that Winter aborted. Winter also has a son named Drummer Boy and you know, when Winter was pregnant, she had an abortion in the first book. So once it gets there, she gets with that nigga 66. She decides that, you know, Bomber Girl's trying to save her. Like, mom, I can help you. Winter like, I ain't trying to hear that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going with that nigga 66. She's in hell. She has like these crazy memories of her mother. She did this weird ranting, like two chapter long tier system of like judging men and like what men were this and what men were that. So she has anal sex with that nigga and it turns her into an animal. A, a serpent first and then she turns into a dog. And then what, what disturbed me and even still flashes in my mind is pretty disturbing is that even when she was a dog, that nigga was sexual with her when she was a puppy. So she finds out that that nigga has a has a girlfriend named Succulus who is like this big ferocious hairy beast with a tail. Succulus hates her, is jealous of her as a dog, beats her, kills her and puts her in like this cage. Thankfully, Bomber Girl and her brother, um, Young Drummer, they save her and they get her out of there. Does Winter learn her lesson? Hell no. It's just a lot going on, really. Like, I mean, it's just, it's a little disheartening how much is going on. After the Bomber Girl and them save her from this, this place, Winter decides, like, look, I'm not trying to be no Muslim. I'm not trying to listen, read the Quran. I don't care what y'all are saying. I aborted y'all. I have no love, no connection for y'all. I don't care. I'm out. I'm going back with that nigga because he's promising me, you know, riches. He's popular. He has money. He has all the things that I value. So I'm back with him. Like he gets back. Succulus goes to tell her that like, um, he preached, she preaches to her like, you know, all the things that you value in this world are bad. Um, that's why you turn into a dog, but that nigga's dead. Like bomber girl and them killed that nigga. So Winter finds her way to this convent with these Christians and she hates it. She meets these two girls there and those become her like her rotter dies. And again, this story, like at this point, I'm like, please wake up Winter. Like get, please, this is, this is nonsense. Winter self-sabotages every chance she gets. Her best interest is never at heart, which is even worse because she always acts as if her best interest is the first is the, is the most important thing when that's technically not even the case like she doesn't she doesn't act for herself she meets this new guy who is lucifer he's that nigga's father she doesn't know him initially and then she has crazy sex with him but tells him no anal because she know it turns her into this 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 animal and she doesn't want to be an animal she breaks out of the convent with the help of this new guy Me sees that that nigga was the son of, of of this new lucifer this new top dog guy that she's with that nigga's brothers rape her bomber girl gives her one last chance and says look i'm gonna come for you one more time teach you these muslim words but if if you if you mess it up that's like it's over for you you going to hell winter still doesn't really care and it's unfortunate but she doesn't care she gets into this new relationship with this with with lucifer and he has this crazy lighthouse her friends are there with her um, she finds out that Succulus is his daughter and that Succulus has been changed into this white woman because that's the, the value of beauty that she that she became. She realizes that Succulus was is that nigga's sister and that they be fucking each other. I mean, if it sounds like I'm ranting and rambling and all over the place, that's how the book was. The book uh, ends with Winter has a threesome with, with Pretty and the top dog, the, the, the devil. It turns out bad for her. She gets lost in, in, in purgatory hell. She becomes like a serpent. And then she's like damn near dead. And like a year passes. She can't move. She can't speak. She can't do anything. She doesn't have any energy. She calls out this Muslim phrase that bomber girl and young drummer told her. And then young drummer takes her to basically this mercy center. Like rehab for lost souls. To better yourself. To, to, to become more self-aware. Winter meets this counselor at this mercy center who has like crocodile shoes who's beautiful has this nice office wealth is a sin greed is a sin she gets to this processing center and she's trying to speed her way through it they tell her listen take your time 
when Terry ain't trying to hear that. Her impatience is doesn't make any sense. She knows that the 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 ladder of not going through this program correctly that she will spend eternity in a thousand times worse spot that she was just in, that she hated, that she called out for God's mercy. She doesn't love God. She worships her father. All the things that would send somebody straight to hell gave Winter the benefit of the doubt. She gets in this truth booth. She starts, she realizes that she killed that old lady. She realizes that, you know, she had that abortion. She realizes that she performs oral sex on men on her knees, but she won't get on her knees to praise God. And before we know it, she wakes up and boom, um, she's in a coma. She woke up from a coma. Her reality show that she hasn't even been in one episode is the biggest reality show in the world, which is nonsense. The last episode is this reunion special where she meets Santiago, who's gotten out of prison. How? We don't know. We'll never know. That's it. And I mean, this book is a roller coaster. It's written well, like... That nobody's gonna gonna question Sister Soldier's writing ability. But this book was terrible. Like I forced myself to get through it. And I read it because I read uh, Coldest Winter Ever. I read the Three Midnight books and I read the Porsche book. You know, I like supporting black artists and black authors, but God, this book was awful. And I think it's it's a C because this whole purgatory setting that's that 90 percent of the book was winter and purgatory it's so disheartening because winter should have died like there's no reason winter's still alive but for somebody who has just seen their life flash in front of them it's just very disappointing i will say though it, it falls right in that line of the porsche book remember porsche book she just ranted and raved she was on an indian reservation and you know then she worked in the flower shop in in new york and and she was in the foster home and it was just all over the place and then midnight books he was 14 years old poor going to korea to get himself a wife then he brought back two wives and not one he started this business and he went to prison and i mean it was just so much there so this is a classic sister soldier and so for that reason i'm not gonna get it in f i don't think that it was the worst book i've ever read i just think that it's just real preachy real self-righteous really judgy and uh it's a little disheartening because winter didn't learn a thing so is this a self-help book for us because i did find myself questioning like wow like Maybe I need to get a better relationship with God if that's how, you know, purgatory is going to be before hell. And it made me like question like the decisions that I made in my own life. So maybe that's what Sister Soldier wanted. Just real preachy, real unrealistic. I read Coldest Winter Ever twice and it's it's long winded too. It's just much more gritty street action than the other books. So I'm going to give this book a C or I guess three stars out of five. It could be better. There's so many things that could have made it better. I think the the woman who Sister Soja is, she just wouldn't give us a book of winter coming back to the streets. I'm out. Uh, subscribe. I'll be doing some more books soon.